Hey everyone, welcome to this video on SQL databases with pandas and python. In the world of data science and analysis, managing vast amount of information is a common challenge. Python with its powerful libraries like pandas has become a go-to tool for data manipulation and analysis. But what if we could combine the flexibility of Python with the structured organization of a relational database? So the pandas library allows us to do exactly that. It acts as a bridge between Python and the structured world of relational database. In this video, we are going to see MySQL database in particular. So let's start working. I have created a Python project in my PyCharm IDE. And these are all the libraries that you need to install in your Python project in order to work smoothly. So in order to combine Python with the MySQL, you need to import the library for the MySQL connector. So for that, you have to write import mysql.connector then as i've said earlier that the thing which connects mysql with python is the pandas library so the next we are going to import pandas library and we are going to use an alias pd for it now the first thing that we need to do is to make a connection between our python project and the mysql database so if you were to use simple python then you will write some code that looks something like this in which you will simply create a connection by using the MySQL connector in which we will define the local host, the root, the password and the port. And once the connection is established, you will go ahead and create the cursor and then perform all the manipulation with the cursor. But since in this video we are focusing on the pandas library, so we are not going to use the cursor. Instead, we are going to use the SQL Alchemy library and then create an engine which acts as a connector for our database. So now I am going to import the create engine library from the SQL Alchemy. So now we need to have a connection string in order to establish a connection with our mysql database so for that i'm going to create a new variable i'm going to call it connection string and to it i'm going to assign the value for my connection so the first thing you need to add is the mysql then you have to add a plus sign and you also need to add by mysql as well after that you have to place a colon and double forward slash and then provide the username for your database i've set it to root then place a colon and you have to provide the password. I haven't sent any password so I'm going to leave it empty. Then place add the rate sign and you have to provide your host name which is localhost in this case. And I've edited the port for my MySQL server so I'm going to add the port here. And that's it for the connection string. Now I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it engine and then I'm going to use the create engine and pass the connection string to it. Let's run it. It has run without any error. This means that our code is working fine. Now the first thing is to create a database and to do so I am going to use the pandas library now. So I'm going to use pd dot. It has different functions for read SQL, read SQL query, read CSV etc. I'm going to use the read SQL query inside it. Firstly you have to pass the query. So I'm going to say create database and the name of database is going to be office. Then come out of the double quotes and the second parameter is going to be your engine which contains the connection. So once it's done now let's quickly go ahead and run it and I have already connected my MySQL server on the dbweaver. Let's quickly refresh it and you can see that office database has been created. But right now if I click on it you will see that it does not have any tables or anything inside it. Now let's see how you can create a table inside MySQL database using pandas and for that I am going to use this query. So here I am using the read SQL function with the pandas in which the first parameter is our query. So here I have passed the query for creating the table. The table name is gonna be employee and these are all the columns that will be present inside the employee table along with the data type. And the next parameter is gonna be the engine so I have passed it. Before running it, let's quickly comment this line because we don't want to create the database again. And I'm going to copy this line and I want to use this database as well. So here I'm going to say use office because in SQL you first need to use the database in order to perform different operations on it. Let's go ahead and run this. So it has executed successfully. Now let's go to our db world and from here I'm going to go inside my office database and you will see that a table by the name employee has been created. 
okay so now let's see how you can populate this table with some data so the pandas library allows us to insert the data from any file inside the table using the read csv function here you can see that this is my file called employees.csv which has all these columns which are exactly similar to the columns of the table that we created just now so i'm going to copy the contents of this file into the employee table and to do so once again i'm going to use the pandas object and i'm going to use the read csv function of it because i'm going to read the csv file now inside it you have to provide the path of the file where it is present so here is the path of my file then i am going to assign it to a data frame object which we will use later on okay so once this is done now we are going to use this data frame object and use its to sql function to actually pass this data to our table so the to sql function is actually used to save something inside the database into a separate table so the first thing that you need to provide is the table name inside which you want to write it so i want to write it in the employee table then you have to provide the connection which is in this case in the engine after that you have to provide value for the if exist method the if exist is very important in this case because as you can see that we already have a table by the name employee so if i run this without if exist flag then it is going to throw us an error saying that the employee table already exists so if we want to prevent this error then you can use this if exists flag and it has three different options either you can set it to fail which is the default value or you can set it to replace which is going to replace all the data which is already present inside the employee table and the third option is to append which is going to take the data which is already present inside the table and append the new data with it so i'm going to select append here and i am going to set indexing to false because we don't want it so now once this is done i'm gonna comment all of these lines because i don't want to create the table once again right now let's go ahead and run this so you can see that it has successfully executed now let's go to our dbweaver i'm gonna go to the table employee and you can see that all the data from our file has been successfully loaded but right now you can see that we can only view the data from our dbweaver so what if we want to view the data here in the pycharm as well so you are going to use pd dot and this time we are going to use the read sql query function inside it i am going to pass the select query that says select star from employee and the next parameter is the engine and i am going to store the result in a data frame and i am going to say df underscore show okay so once this is done now you have to actually show the result which has been fetched inside df dot show and for that we are going to use the ipython library from ipython dot display import the display library and then we are simply going to use the display function inside which we are going to pass the df underscore show object okay so we don't need to read the data once again so i'm gonna comment this part as well and we simply have to read the data now let's quickly go ahead and run it let's quickly expand it and you can see that it has fetched the data from our employee table here in our pycharm ide but right now it is showing us all of the data which is present inside the table but if we want to select data on the basis of particular condition so let me cut this line and paste it outside the comment now let's say if we want to fetch the data of the employees where the salary is greater than 10000 and for that we are going to use the pandas library and use its read sql query function inside which the first parameter is gonna be query where i am going to select everything from the table employee and then we have to add a where clause where the salary is greater than 10,000. okay then the next parameter is gonna be the engine so i'm going to pass it and then i am going to save it in a variable then i am going to use the display function inside which i am going to pass the df underscore result to show the data which has been fetched from the query now let's quickly go ahead and run it so you can see that it has fetched a seven rows where the salary of the employee is greater than 10,000. so right now we are working with a single table what if we want to have multiple tables 
So let's quickly go ahead and create a new table by the name departments just like we did previously. So here's the query for it. Let's quickly go ahead and run it. So it has executed successfully. Now let's go to the DB where let's refresh it. And you are going to see that now in addition to the employee table, there is a new department table. So just like we added the data from a file into the employee table. Similarly, I also have a departments.csv file and I am going to read its content inside the table. And to do so, I am going to write this query where I am using the read csv function and here is the path of my file. Now I am going to simply comment this line from here because we don't want to create the department table. Go ahead and run it. You can see that the process finished with exit code 0. Now let's go to our DB word. I'm going to go inside my department table. Right now there is nothing inside it. Let's refresh it. And you can see that everything has been loaded. And if you see at the creation of the department table, you can see that there is a department ID in the department table. Also, there is a department ID in the employee table as well. So this means that the department ID in the employee table is a foreign key for this department table. So what if we want to find the department information of each employer and store it in the different tables? This can be done by simply using the join statement. So in order to do so, once again, I'm going to use the read SQL query function. And inside the function, the first parameter is going to be query. I'll be selecting the first name and employer ID from the employer table. So I'm going to say t1.emp underscore ID and then t1.first underscore name. Then I want to select everything from the next table. So I'm going to say t2.star. Then we have to provide the table. So after that, you are going to say from employee as t1. And then I'm going to join it with the department table as t2. Then as you know that with the join statement you have to provide an on clause on the basis of which you want to join the two tables. So I'm going to join the two tables on the condition t1 dot department underscore id equal to t2 dot department underscore id and then come out of the double quotes and the second parameter is going to be the engine. I'm going to save it inside data frame object. So once this is done now we want to display the contents. I'm going to call the display function and pass the object here. So if I simply do this and run it, it is simply going to execute the query and display as the result. But what if we want to store the results of this query inside a new table? For that, I am going to use df underscore res dot to SQL function. And inside this function, firstly, you have to provide the table name inside which you want to store it. So I want to say join result. Okay, so a new table by the name join result will be created and all the result will be stored in this table. Then the next parameter is going to be the engine. Then you have to provide is exist equal append. And then finally, we are going to set the indexing to false. Let me first comment these two lines. So now let's go ahead and run the project. Let's quickly expand it. You can see here that this is the table that shows the result of our join query. Here for the employee ID 198, first name is Donald and this is the information about the department in which he is working. So now let's quickly see if the result has been saved in the new table or not. For that go to dbwell and I'm going to go inside my office database and you can see that a new table by the name join result has been created and this is the data that corresponds to the result in our join query. Alright, so in this video, you have seen how you can actually connect to a MySQL database with Python using the pandas library, how you can import the data from some file into your database table, how you can manipulate the table, run different queries on it, and how you can store the result of some particular query as a separate table inside the database. That's all for this video. I hope you really liked it and I'm going to see you in some other video. Thank you.